Hey, TikTok users. In this video, I'm going to answer some questions I've been getting about TikTok, which is the tool I've been using this year. It's my favorite to do app as of recording this video. And I know a lot of you like it too, but you may also have some questions. So I hope this video will answer at least one of those questions. Let's get started. JC asks whether it's possible to run a getting things done setup with the free version of TikTok. Personally, I don't think you'll get very far with the free version because it has some serious limitations, such as only allowing for up to nine lists. And that includes archive lists, by the way, or up to 99 tasks, which in TikTok can be so much more than a to do. And especially in, in a GTD setup, your lists in total are going to have much more than 99 tasks, probably if you include things like someday maybe list. So I would not cheap out on the pro plan. And that's a more general point I'd like to make here. I want to be respectful of everybody's budgets, but most to do apps, including TikTok, are not expensive. They are an investment. I feel like a lot of people frame productivity apps as being expensive once they go over the 10 US dollars per month mark. And it is true if you compare it to the rest. And TikTok is even well below that number with only 240, I believe, is their current pricing on a monthly basis. But still, even if it was more than that, it's still not a lot of money if you think about the return it gives you, which is a clear head, which is a second brain that organizes your life, which helps you focus in on tasks that actually move the needle and hopefully also increase your income as a result. Tick tick is literally just the price of one Starbucks coffee per month. So if you just find one thing to remove that is this cheap from your monthly expenses, or just do one little thing that helps you earn that amount of money, you'll earn it right back. Don't cheap out on this kind of stuff. It is an investment. Tick tick premium is certainly worth that investment in my experience. Christian asked whether the detail pane on the right side in the Windows app, although this is also true for the Mac app, can be hidden in some way. Now, what he's referring to here is the details section on the right side whenever you click on a specific task or note. I haven't found a way to avoid this from showing once you click on it. Even if you double click on an item, it will pop out, but it will also still be visible on the right side as well. Navigating to a list without clicking on an individual item in that list will make it disappear again temporarily, but there is no way to hide it from what I've seen once you want to view the details of any individual task or note. Daniel asks whether TikTok offers any guarantee that lists such as your reference lists won't suddenly quote unquote vanish into thin air. And in the comments, he also added that he had an experience with Nirvana, the software suddenly deleting or somehow having his list deleted from that app. So I understand where the question is coming from. That is an awful experience to go through. If you want to trust your system and you have so much data stored in there, you open the app and suddenly it's all gone. So first of all, I'm sorry that you went through that. Now, I feel like this sort of guarantee is already implied with apps like TikTok or any other productivity app for that matter, whose sole purpose is at its core to provide the ability to create those lists and store your to-dos and information in there. If it literally fails in that key responsibility, then it's an awful app that has to be ditched. Fortunately, though, I haven't run into that issue. I haven't read or seen or heard about other people having this issue. And I also know that TikTok provides backups, which it's great. So I hope that provides you with some peace of mind that TikTok provides a software that you can trust in this regard. No problems on my end. Amy asks whether we can have non-actionable tasks visible in the calendar view. The answer is yes, because you can use TikTok's notes feature. And I also have a full video on that explaining it in more detail. But in short, you can associate a date with a task, of course, then convert it to a note and it will retain the date and time association, therefore showing up in your TikTok calendar view. Xebic asks, where do I put my watch and reading tasks? How do I organize those inside of TikTok? First of all, a key delineation I make with TikTok is that lists are there to indicate the project or focus area that an individual task may belong to, which means that it can certainly be a standalone task, as Chebek implies in his question when it comes to reading or watching tasks. If there is no multi-step outcome involved with the watch or read task, but maybe a standalone article that I just want to read out of interest, for example, certainly it can be placed in that list. But 
it can be placed in any list. It can be related to a bigger project. Maybe I want to build my own bike and there's an instruction video I want to watch that explains how I can install the tires. It would become part of the build my bike list. How I actually distinguish between types of tasks, in other words, contexts, which watch and read our examples of, is by using tags. I apply the watch or read tag whenever it's appropriate. And I also use the next tag to differentiate actions I can do now from actions I already know I will need to do in the future, but it aren't available right now for whatever reason. Those do not get the next tag. And lastly, I indeed have filters that combine tasks that have both the next tag as well as the context tag like watch or read. And those filters are saved as the watch or reading lists. I actually have those concentrated on one specific device, which is my tablet. I use that as my main reading or watching device. And on its home screen, I use TickTick widgets that display tasks automatically generated from those exact filters. I have them right next to each other. So all I have to do is open the tablet and I'm presented with the things I want to read or watch without any friction, without needing to open the TickTick app even. I just need to press the task and from there I get linked to the article or video I wanted to read or watch. Now, before we continue on to the next question, if you're a TickTick user, then you need to check out my new TickTick Power User course. It's a self-guided video course that outlines my exact system to turn TickTick from a simple to-do app into a full second brain for you to organize your life in. The link's in the description. The next question is about routines in TickTick. Can you, for example, set up a task that repeats automatically every first Monday of the month? The answer is yes. Under date and reminder, once you're in the task details window, go to repeat custom, then select month, then select on the first month, which is Monday. You can play around with this to set up very specific custom repetition intervals. Bart asked a somewhat similar question, which is how about routines that roll over where you don't want to have the routine set on an exact date or time, but instead base it on the last completion date. For example, you mark a task complete and you want to have it available again 10 days from the last completion date, whenever that was. And here again, you can go to date and reminder, then repeat custom. And this time you go to completion date. Now next to week or day or month, if you select that, you can fill out the number of those instances that need to pass for the next task to become due. For example, filling out three next to week will make the new task due in three weeks from whenever you mark the current instance of that routine complete. Yuli asks whether it's possible to automate the next action tag. In other words, have a sort of sequential project support whenever you mark a previous instance of a next action done, you can predefine what is the next next action going to be and it will automatically show up as such with the tag associated with it. And unfortunately, the answer is no. And I believe this would be a true game changer for TickTick if they do implement something of this sort. And we know it's possible because apps like Asana and OmniFocus do have this feature, for example. But as of right now, that is still a piece of manual work. So if you have your projects, for example, preloaded, into TickTick, what I would do is use the Kanban view to differentiate the various stages of a project, associate tasks that are in the current state, so to speak, with the next action tag, leave the rest, but predefine their context if you can. And then every time you complete a next action, you quickly check the project itself to see are there new actions available for completion. Henry asks, which one do I like better? TickTick or OmniFocus? Now, OmniFocus is pretty great. I have a full video on OmniFocus as well that you can check out. And as I just mentioned, they do have something like a sequential project support, which is fantastic. They have integrated reviewing functionality that is a lot better than what TickTick has to offer. But overall, TickTick just does everything I needed to do and does it well. And it's more complete, in my opinion, than OmniFocus is, which especially stands out when it comes to the notes feature. I use it heavily to build up a personal reference library, for example, and notes in OmniFocus, that is really a stretch. Besides, OmniFocus is an Apple-only app. I also have a Windows machine that I use. I don't even have an iPhone, so I would be screwed on the go. Ira asks, why am I unable to clip a website into TickTick like I'm able to do with 
Evernote. And this is referencing TickTick's Web Clipper. And the simple answer here is you're doing nothing wrong. It is just an unfortunate limitation of TickTick's Web Clipper. Evernote, for all its flaws, I believe still has the very best web clipper out there, which allows you to clip entire pages with their contents or just specific quotes. It includes the design. It can also exclude the design. You have all these choices, whereas with TickTick, you only have two choices. Either you save the link as a bookmark and it will show up as such in your inbox, or you can select a piece of text, right click it and select save to TickTick, which will then turn that text into the task title with the link included, but it doesn't go further than that. So that is just a limitation you're going to have to live with. Again, I think here is another major opportunity for TickTick to improve its user experience in alignment with what users expect from it and what I would definitely use it for. If you have any more questions about how TickTick works, let me know in the comments so others can see it too and benefit from that as well. If you have a more personal or detailed question about how you can use TickTick specifically for your own use case, you can also work with me one on one either through an asynchronous video consultation or in a live video call. I'll have the links on how that works all in the description. And again, if you want to enroll in a self guided video course that'll help you maximize TickTick's value, you can now enroll in my TickTick power user course link and details in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.